Hey, what's up you sexy bitches and welcome back to this week's Weekly D. And today I have one of my good friends on actually, Lucy Cork. Lucy used to be quite famous within the pole industry for um, competing at some of the big competitions like Miss Pole Dance. Now that was quite a few years ago. She's become a stunt woman and I just can't wait to talk to her about this cool career that she has now moved from pole into. She's worked with some amazing names. Tom Cruise being one of the ones that I'm just like absolutely gagged over. I can't believe it. So yeah, anyway, without further ado, this is the weekly D. Because honey, if you ain't getting your D on the daily, you better at least be getting it once on the weekly. If you're not getting any and you want some tea, then come and join Dan up on the Weekly D. It's the Weekly D. Hey, Lucy Cork. Lovely to see you. <laughs> it's been so long since I've actually ever, ever spoken to you because you've just like disappeared from the pole industry. And this is my way of <laughs> clawing you back to us. How are you doing, babe? I'm good. I'm good. I'm busy. That's On another good. film. Yes. On we're another busy. film. I'll tell you what, before yes. we go anywhere, let's let's yes. just put some context in here. Can you just give us a quick little intro for anyone who's listening to this? Tell them who you are, what's your name, where'd you come from, all the all the deets. Give us the lowdown. Okay, well I'm a Lucy Cork. Um gosh, I did poll back in the day when I was sixteen. Um, for gosh, like five years I suppose. Uh, from Surrey, um, and then yeah, transition to being a stunt woman. It's just such a cool trans. You're the only person, by the way, well that I know of that you that's know. Trans- of. <laughs> yeah, that's transitioned from pole, and then all of a sudden got into this crazy world of like, uh, what's it called? Crazy world of like stunting, or what's it? <laughs> stunting, yeah, so stunting, stunting, stunt perform, yeah. stunt double. Whatever you, you want to call me, really. <laughs> did you like always intend like when you kind of first? like left school and stuff to think that you'd be working on movies doing stunt work Never. no 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 not really I mean it's not really a thing back then I think it's more uh of a career now but back then it was like kind of unheard of like you didn't really hear about any stunt women uh or stunt performers for that matter really but I think it probably was to do with when I did that music video Nero Right, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, and then that was like my first day on set. You know, I did like one day and I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. Yeah. You know, all the cameras and everything. And then, uh, yeah, I suppose it yeah, just came out of nowhere, really. <laughs> so for, for context, for anyone listening to this, you're probably like, what are you talking about? But Lucy was in a <laughs> Nero video. How many years ago was that now? Oh, well, I was 18. 18 when that happened. So what, I'm 31 now. So, yeah. Oh my god! Yeah. Is that how long it's like, been? Yeah, it's been a while, right? That's crazy. So Lucy was in this video, and it kind of just went viral, really, didn't it? Everyone, all the pole dancers yeah. in the pole community were like, "Oh my god!" You were kind of one of. I'm um, maybe not the first. Mm. But I'm not going to say the first because you know what people are like. If you say you were the first at doing something, yeah, like, exactly. no, you weren't. But like, you yeah. were one of the the first people really being like a big name music video. Yeah, we're not yeah, talking yeah. small scale. We're talking like, you know, on all the sort of radio stations and stuff. I know. And yeah, very I, random that I got picked for it, but I was like, it was just kind of a luck thing. It was like, I got a message of uh, one of the pole dancers of uh, Facebook Messenger and they wanted to find like a pole dancer. So I just gave my picture in and a couple of videos of my pole dancing. And then, yeah, straight away it was, it just happened within like a few days. So, it was, yeah, it was pretty quick. Um, and I didn't realise how big it was going to be until I kind of did the video and then they kind of sent it to me before it was released. I was like, oh, wow, I'm kind of like a big part of that music video. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. You were a yeah. big feature on the I remember that was why as well, like, you weren't just like a bit of a background thing. That's why I think everyone was like, oh, my God, this is kind of crazy because it was a big feature mm. of you. That was why it was so cool. So and that, so would you say that's what kind of like gave you the bug and you were like, oh, my God, I want to do more of this? Yeah, I suppose it did. I suppose because I kind of thought, oh, from the back of that, maybe I'll get more things from pole dancing. And it kind of never happened. And I thought, you know what, I, I probably should get some more skills up because I think for pole dancing, for me, it's like you could either go two ways. You could either go down teaching, which I didn't really kind of enjoy that much as to have it as a career, or you could go down, obviously, another path. And I don't really want that either. So I just thought, 
I'm going to have to get more skills if I want to get, uh, you know, I was, I was at 19 at the time. So I kind of needed to decide what I was going to do with my life really. And uh, yeah, I think as well, like a five year kind of in the pole industry, I kind of got a little bit bored of it, I suppose, and just thought, let's do something else. So that's yeah. Been, yeah. That's fair enough. And like, and have you gotten bored of any of the stunt work yet? Or are you still loving it? Uh, no, I'm still, I'm still loving it. I just love fighting. Like, I love fighting people. Um, <laughs> I'm just, I, I just have why. a lot of anger. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I think it's how I just release it. I just fight men all the and is, time. And is that the majority of what you do is fighting? It's not like jumping off of crazy stuff do you know what it's so funny yeah do you, yeah no do you remember like one of your first stunt gigs that you did you had to like cycle a bike into a bin or something do you remember <laughs> I remember that <laughs> i always yeah. remember thinking that's my girl that's my babes <laughs> yeah good. but you gotta start somewhere but, i know so, right that's so one of tell my me, <laughs> how how do you um go from your pole dancing and then all of a sudden you decide stunt. How did you, you must have had someone who was like, oh, I'm a stunt man or a stunt woman. And they were like, have you ever thought yeah. of Yeah. Yeah. So from Sarah, uh, Sarah Brown, Pulse Studio, Sarah Brown. Sarah um, I know. I yeah. don't even remember Sarah that her last name is Sarah Brown. I just <laughs> I know, know her as Sarah Pulse Studio. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So obviously we were uh, really, good, really good friends, still really good friends now. And she was dating a guy who was kickboxing. Um, actually literally down my high street and he taught it and through him there was a guy called calvin who was a stuntman and we were all kind of like mutual friends i actually knew calvin already for a few years but never thought anything of it i was just like oh cool he's a stuntman yeah yeah um and then uh and then so when i was 19 i obviously was like okay i need more skills so then i thought oh maybe i should train to be a stunt woman and I have not done anything. Like, I didn't do any martial arts, no gymnastics. Like, when I was a kid for, like, you know, a year. Um, but nothing, no, nothing to make me want to do stuff. And I was speaking to him, and I said, look, I'm thinking about training for stunt women. What do you think? And he says, yeah, Luce, that's, that's great. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll take you to some training, because there's actually not a lot of stunt women. Um, I was like, okay, cool. So then he took me to my first gymnastics session taught me a few things um which actually at 19 is bloody scary you know you're a kid and you've got all these you know you don't care you're fearless as a, as an adult you kind of get the fear and it's quite hard actually as an adult and then uh obviously went to my kickboxing place down the road and I loved it like I loved the martial arts it was it was just I just I just fell in love with it straight away and so then I went to those trainings and then obviously it cost a lot of money so I went to my stepdad and I told him, I was like, look, I'm thinking about training to be a stunt woman. And weirdly, he was kind of just, I don't know, almost as if he expected it. And he was just like, yeah, that's a, yeah, I think that's a really good idea, Lucy. And then weirdly, <laughs> he knew a stunt coordinator who is basically your boss. He hires you. Um, he looks after you on set. And he rang him up and he said, so my stepdaughter's trying to train for the register. Um, and what do you think? Like, does she get work? Is it worth her training for a couple of years? And he said, look, yeah, she's a good height. Uh, if she gets her skills up, then yeah, because there's not many stunt women around. So yeah, I, I would say she should. Um, so yeah, from there, I started training. It's just like, I, I'm a real, like, true believer of like, things that are meant to happen will happen and it just happened to be that he knew that person and mm. he put you in contact with these and I just love that like I think that's so cool so and you were saying about the register so I want to mm -hmm. ask about this because I, I found this really fascinating and I hope people listening to this find it fascinating too but there is a mm. register of stunt people and to to be on this register you have to have a certain amount of stunts right so I mm -hmm. remember a guy telling me once because when I used to go to adult gymnastics there was a couple guys there that used to train used to train parkour and yeah. they used to have to um train certain things parkour he also had to do horse riding because he was in like some of the films where it was like they were riding horses and like fighting and stuff on them and like so yeah. they had to learn to ride horses they he had to do um parkour archery was it it was all these different oh, things archery. and i was like I this is so cool he had to learn all these different skills how many skills mm -hmm. do you have to learn 
Uh, so it's six skills, uh, six disciplines. So it's basically like a falling one. Um, oh, what, what, sorry? One. Falling. So like you could do high diving, which I do right. high diving. So my skills are gymnastics, uh, which is like your agility strength. I did trampolining. I did high diving, so that's the uh, off-temi sport, um, scuba, rock climbing, and kickboxing. Um, right, so you have okay. to do, you get, basically get all these categories, and you have to pick which ones you want to do. Um, so, yeah, those, I, are, those are ones. <laughs> I, I remember gymnastics because, do you remember the, the fail that went viral on Fail Army? They, like, paid you for that. <laughs> Oh was, yeah, for the pole one. Uh, was it? Yeah, wasn't it? Wasn't it on a bar or something like that? It was on like um, you were on the bars, and weren't you strapped to the bar? You were doing the swing overs or something like that. So I can't remember. Oh, yeah, yeah, what was. you were I think doing. So. I mean, I've had a few fails. Like there was a pole one where I did like a move, and I literally whacked my face. <laughs> that really hurt. And then I yeah, swore. I probably did the pole. Did you know when you're on like uh, like the bars at the gymnastics, and you're doing like the swing overs, and they've got their hands strapped. I could have sworn yeah. it was something like where you went up. But then you got your arms buckled at the top and you fell. And I remember you saying to me, oh, you're like, Dan, you should send your fail into Bail Army because they'll probably pay you. <laughs> and then I did it. But then later on, they did contact me and was like, oh, would you like, uh, would you like, uh, what would <laughs> you buy your fail? <laughs> yeah, I don't think, I only got paid like 60 quid. But hey, it was 60 quid better hey. than nothing. But, exactly. Um, anyway, I digress. Um, yeah, so you chose these skills and your mm. dad, your stepdad, he paid for you to do the training in these, did he? Yeah, uh, luckily. Well, because obviously my like my my brother, my stepbrother, my stepsister, they all went to university, and I didn't. So that was kind of like his way of like, this is your university. And luckily, they paid for it because I don't know how people work like full time as well as training. Because I mean, your training. So say like my week would be kickboxing in the morning. Then I'll do maybe like a private gymnastics session. Then I'd go do gymnastics in the evening. My next day would be wake up, do trampolining. And trampolining sometimes would have to happen at like half six in the morning before school started. Um, so imagine that as well as like working. At least I could kind of train. I'll train like three, four disciplines every day uh, mm. for like the next two and a half years. So for me, that was amazing because I just got to literally just full time train. And then also you have to do 60 days of extra days. I'm pretty sure it's changed now. Like a certain distances have changed and it's, I think it's a bit harder to get on the register. But um, yeah, so 60 days worth of extra days as, as well. Like, you know, it's uh, it's quite hard to get them, especially yeah. for working as well. So yeah, That's luckily so for cool. me, I, I could train. Yeah. So yeah, it's great. That's <laughs> awesome. And if you don't mind me asking, I mean, how much did that actually cost you to get fully qualified? Do you know roughly a number of what, what uh, yeah, you had well, to it's pay? Probably, it's roughly like 20000 Okay, well, I mean, you say that, but actually it's not as bad as uni, right? I think uni yeah. is more than that, right? Yeah, I mean, I probably spent, I mean, I probably did like near more than 30 mark, only because I think because I did so many uh, private sessions, because like I say, when you're an adult, you get fear and then I'll have like private gymnastic sessions. I would then try out, say like horse riding and horse riding is really expensive. Um, oh so God, I tried so that expensive. out. I, I know. And then I thought, you know what? I don't think I'm going to be a horse rider. I think I'll stop that one. So I did it for like a month, tried it out, <laughs> stopped that one. And then if you do say rally driving, that's quite expensive. So I ended up actually not doing rally, but when I started working, I started driving. You know, so it's certain certain things that you kind of just oh, I wait, see. wait so you for. Yeah. Add, so as you as you start doing the stunt work, you actually start adding skills like the rally driving. Yeah, you've got to like martial arts, for instance. I did. I started kickboxing. You have to get to uh, brown belt kickboxing. Maybe that's gone to black belt now. I'm not sure, but yeah, I had to get to brown belt. But then I kind of changed. I went to Thailand for a month. Learned Muay Thai. And then from Muay Thai, then I did a bit of BJJ. Now I do a lot of judo. So you kind of just adapt and you kind of just want to do every single martial art you can um, and just get good at basically everything. You just basically want to be an all-rounder, you know. So. And, then, and then are you having to, even today, are you still having to go for rally sessions and go for your kickboxing session? You're having to keep up with all of these skills? Yeah, yeah, you do. And uh, especially if you've got, you know, say a driving job, before a driving job, I would probably go on a weekend and I'd probably just go for a little bit of drifting uh, just to, like, kind of check that I can still do the skills. 
Um, if I've got a specific kick or specific fight scene, I'll go ahead and go get sessions just because I love it as well. Yeah. But I will definitely just go do it on my own uh, sure. just to kind of just make sure I've, I've still got it. You and know? I remember you telling me, obviously I'm not going to talk about it on here, but I remember you telling me about um, – like it's a well-paid job and now I can see why. Well, cause you haven't spent so much money to like keep up yeah. these skills. That's crazy. Like how much do you think it costs you a year now to keep up your skills or is it better Ooh, now because, because you're kind of in the industry? Um, it's pretty better now, especially because you're at work, right? So at work, they're very good at, if you need to train at it, if you need to rehearse it, they'll let you do it there. So ah. you've actually, you're kind of getting, paid whilst you're at work to kind of learn a skill right if I need to learn something you know like for instance this job there's a bit of driving but luckily I got to practice at work with the car so I could do it there and then um that's so cool <laughs> yeah so it's quite good it depends what kind of job you're on right so some people expect you to be able to do it I mean you should really but if there's something you need to practice then you can practice it right they just want you to do the best so that you can and if you've got the time, you know, you're you're there in a film for, what, a couple of months. So you may as well learn it then in prep right. before mm. you start filming it. Um, well, and luckily okay. there's a lot of rehearsal time as well. So you still get rehearsal time. As soon as you rehearse it a lot, you, uh, you just get better and better. Because they want it to be perfect for the film, right? Yeah. But again, like I still train at the weekends. Or say I just went to Thailand. I just did like a week of just Muay Thai just because I love it. And I just love to train. Like I literally am obsessed with it. Yeah. Um, well, it's like, um, you know, Sarah Scott and um, her partner Adam. Do you know them? Mm. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I was actually about to have a pole lesson with her in Thailand, but it didn't work out timing wise. But yeah, I still, I still go back to it. <laughs> but, but they love all, I, th I don't know if it's my time, mm. but they, um, they do the same. BJJ. They're, BJJ. They love it. Mm, oh yeah. my God. Yeah. Like, they're super into it. And that's amazing. I just, and it's like very big there in Thailand, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's one of those things I tried uh, Jiu Jitsu, but. For me, it's one. Of, it's hard one because I like to do so many things, you know. And I know that with that sport in particular, you have to do it. You have to train at it like three or four times a week to 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 do it. And I just, I just, I want to do other stuff. Like I want to go judo, but I want to go yoga, but I want to go crossfit. <laughs> you know? yeah, just like well this is why it's kind of perfect for you because remember when you were saying about pole and you were like oh i kind of got a bit bored of it at least with mm. this there's just no way of getting bored of this there's so many different skills that you're going to be doing all the time so yeah exactly it's just impossible to get bored i am um, i want to ask you about um well i just want to give you now the opportunity because i want you to brag tell us some of the big names that you've worked with tell us some of the movies you've worked on i, I want to hear them <laughs> all right what's, so, what's your favorite ones what's the ones that are like god mm. i'm so fucking proud of myself for doing that one well i mean i suppose it was from the beginning so the very beginning i um i just tell you the story like of how from when yeah. i was sunk because it kind of leads to it so um obviously i got the register uh mm -hmm. when did i got on 2013 december and then in 2014 is when i kind of started it's very slow at the beginning january um, and then I did a couple of TV jobs, obviously the one where I rode my bicycle with the bin, <laughs> jobs like that. So Brilliant. yeah, I did that. Listen, and then at the beginning as well, you do, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You do observation days where you kind of just go on set, you meet the coordinator, meet the stunt guys, just show your face basically, uh, that you're willing to work. Um, and then I got crawl off, uh, Wade Eastwood, who was a massive second unit director, coordinator, and he rang me up and he was like, Hi Lucy, so I just got your page, which is basically your pictures and your stats and everything. And he was like, So I'm working on this movie, you may have heard of it, it's Mission Impossible, uh, it's with Tom Cruise. And I'm looking for you a might have heard of it. I'm Maybe. not about it. I don't know if you've like, ever heard yeah, of this movie, heard, it's yeah, called Mission Impossible. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, Yeah, yeah, I heard of that one. Um, and then he said, so cool, so are you, how are your fighting skills? And I was like, yeah, 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 they're pretty good. Um, and then he was like, okay, so we've got some water work as well. So you did your scuba diving. I said, yeah, I love being on the water, which I actually don't really. But I was like, yeah, it's cool. I've done my scuba. I'm a dive master. Um, I'm good. And he's like, okay, cool. Well, I'll get you in for an audition and uh, we'll see. So he gets me in. And that was, this was like a couple of months later in May. And I rock up. God, I remember it so well. It was, it was like it was so long ago as well. It was like eight years ago. 
Um, and he got me in for audition, did a fight with the stunt guys, met Tom Cruise's stunt double, met the fight coordinator, met all the riggers, and it was a whole new world. I was like, wow, there's like cardboard boxes, there's like mats everywhere, this is it, I've made it. Um, and going into it, I was a bit, bit nervous, but because I was so new, I just thought to myself, Do you know what? You may as well learn something, just have fun with it, and just perform and just learn. So I did it and did the fight. Wade came in, looked at the fight, did it a couple of times, and then he took me outside and he was like, Lucy. So I've auditioned a lot of girls in my time, all of them pretty much. He was from LA as well, so he's, he's big time, like he's. You know, he's been with everyone. And he goes, I've auditioned all the girls, and that was by far the best audition I've ever seen. And I was That's like, amazing. Oh, really? Oh my God. Okay. Yeah, and then he was like, All right, so you're on two week trial. Um, we'll just test you out, see how you like. You start Monday. And I was like, Oh my God, oh this my is God. amazing. Yeah, so I was like, This is incredible. I was like, thinking, Fuck. Well, the first thing I thought about was funny. I was like, Oh my God, this is like a year's worth of work. I can afford things now because I had like a grand in my bank account and I thought oh my god but now I could probably you know get a new car after this job or something this would be amazing and work with all these people I'm going to learn so much and luckily I did the two-week trial and I passed it and I carried on with them and um, so yeah so I suppose Tom Cruise was like the first big star um because I, I remember you telling me oh no in fact I think it might have been Sarah and tell me if this is true when you like bought your first house or something, like didn't Tom like buy you like gifts like for your house? Yeah, <laughs> yeah because I suppose because I was so new to it, obviously I was kind of training uh, at the same time, like learning everything, and he could see that and he really loved that as well. And yeah, he bought me a, I don't think it was a voucher for John Lewis. Yeah. And then like a massive chopping board. It was amazing. That chopping was board. It. I still use it now. <laughs> a chopping board. Yeah, it was a good chopping board. I so How it was crazy amazing like you don't get that and like a probably personalized you know little note and stuff so it was a, it was pretty amazing actually that's just um, so I, sweet isn't it like isn't that so cool though to just think that literally your first job yeah sure it was riding a bike into a bin but then your second job <laughs> was mission fucking impossible what the hell yeah. what's he like he's cool i mean uh yeah he's, he's intense uh but he does the job really well he makes sure like you're pumped up ready to fight um you know he deals with everything he deals with costume he, he thinks of everything like you know acting your performance you know he really g's you up and luckily for me he likes um to do stuff with stunt performers so he you know I'll, a lot of the times i'll be doing it with him um which is quite amazing so he does a lot of his own stunts right yeah he does yeah yeah, yeah he does i mean obviously he's a stunt double um yeah to test out all the, the rigs um, and whatnot. But, yeah, I mean, he's incredible, actually. Watching him doing all his stunts, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty insane what he can do. Oh, hey, sorry to interrupt your podcast. I just wanted to quickly ask you something. Do you want to look cool like me? I don't know if you're watching this on YouTube right now or if you're watching on Spotify, but if you are, check out this super cute cap that I'm wearing. This cap has got a little pole dancer on the front of it. Oh my God, I'm obsessed. <laughs> But if you like this cab and you want to check out this brand, this brand is actually owned by Lucy, who is on the podcast today. So check out luharcaps.com. You can also find them on Instagram, luharcaps. So if you want a cute little cap that's got a pole dancer on it, go and check it out and you can get 10% off using code WEEKLYD. That's 10% off luharcaps using code WEEKLYD. Let's get back to the podcast. And have you worked on any other movies apart from Mission Impossible since then? Or is that like a full-time kind of like contract where you... No, so yeah, so I did Mission uh, 5, which actually took quite a while. The missions take quite a long time, one to two, two years. I did Mission 6, I did Mission 7. Um, and then in between that, we did a, a few of Tom Cruise movies. So we did Jack Reacher, so I went to New Orleans to do that one. And then we did The Mummy, which... Uh, oh my god, those, those locations were amazing. The things that we did on that film were incredible. Like we I did bet. zero G, so with the plane that goes up and then you kind of just like float around. I think it was like 23 seconds or something. We did <sighs> that. We worked in Namibia, like fighting in the dunes. That, that was incredible. So, so yeah. Cool. Luckily with his movies, he likes to do actions for real. So 
you tend to just go to these locations and you do it for real, um, which a lot of movies obviously they're on green screen now. Um, so yeah, I feel I feel like I've, I've seen such a good part of it. I'm actually yeah. quite lucky to. Have. Yeah, and, so. and you know you were saying about oh, I've done a lot of Tom's movies. Do you, are you mm. employed by Tom's team then or something like? Is that who or no. it just happens to be the the person you work for does a lot of work for Tom? Yeah, exactly. So I work with uh, Wade Eastwood, um, and he he's obviously done a few of the movies beforehand. He did I think he did Edge of Tomorrow, which is actually funny. I was doing um, obviously when I did Extra Days, I remember I had to be in one of those you know those little so uh, exosuits. And one day I was just like a random character, like just running around the background with like a load of extra girls. And I remember seeing Wade and his fight team. I was like, oh, that's really cool. Like, oh, can't wait to do that one day. And literally it was him that I would, you know, be on his team for the next seven, eight years. That's crazy. So, and what are yeah. you working on now? So what, what's the last thing that you did? So, uh... Last year, I was doing. I was in a, a film called Our Man from Jersey, which was with Mark Wahlberg and Halle Berry. Uh, actually, got a character uh, moment in it, so I've got a fight. I oh. don't know how much I want to say, but yeah, so yeah, okay. I'm in that movie. So, oh, so you kind of transitioned for like. So sometimes they say to you, "Well, we'd actually like you to be a character rather than just a stunt double." Yeah, as well, because sometimes you know what's funny is I feel like it's quite, you know, because really stunt if they need someone to kind of act, but also they need them to do a fight, it's actually easier just to get a stunt performer in. Um, so, yeah, so that's, that happened um, on that on that movie because they needed a, a big fight. So it's like, well, we need a girl. Why don't we just get Lucy to do it? Because she's, you know, helping with the choreography and and I can I can act a little bit, you know. Don't give me lines or anything. I'm useless at that. But I can perform. I can, uh, you know. I can yeah. do little bits like that. Well, so that's, that's cool. kind of and, where you came from. You were a pole performer. Like, when we're on stage, we're performing, mm. aren't we? So it's not like you don't know how to perform. That's yeah, so cool. True. And what about now? What are you doing now? Are you, are you on time off now? No, no. Now I'm um, on a film called Back in Action, which is the new Jamie Foxx and Cameron Diaz movie. So, yeah, so I was working on that since uh, October, and then it will go till March, April time. You say Jamie um, Foxx? Jamie Fox, yeah. And um, Cameron Diaz. What have you do Cameron you get Diaz. to meet them and hang out with them or not really? I do. I actually haven't met Jamie yet. Um but I've met Cameron doing like fight training with her. She's got a few fights. And is she uh, nice? Yeah, she's lovely. Yeah, yeah, she's lovely. It must yeah. be so cool to like get to meet people that for years we've watched on TV and like you know, yeah, no, right. if you think about it, like when, when you were younger, you probably would have watched her on like Charlie's Angels and stuff, right? I remember yeah, it's a holiday, it's a holiday. The holiday. Like, oh, like, holiday. You know, it's just, and then all of a sudden you're like working together, like mm, casual, just working with Cameron Diaz. Has, right? I know. I know. <laughs> it's just... funny though, because I don't really, um, because I think I have to work with them so much. You kind of just see them normal. <laughs> like they're not dressed up. They're in like tracky bottoms. They've got yeah. MMA corn or whatever. Um, it must and be then, quite nice you know, to see their like human side, see like what they're really like, like nice. Yeah, just yeah, down to exactly. people, maybe. Yeah, yeah, have you, it really is. You don't have to say names, of course. You probably legally aren't allowed to. But have you ever had any where you've met them and you've been maybe a bit disappointed? They've not been what you thought they would be. Mm, no, I think you just see certain sides when you're on set. Uh, but I think it's maybe the stress of being. Yeah you know, uh, with whatever they have to deal with. I mean, you, you see certain sides, but then it's, again, you see different sides to everyone. Of you course. know, if they're going through something stressful, when I perform, I'll go quiet. Or if I'm annoyed at myself, like I'll be, you know, kind of angry. So, I, not really. I think, uh, I think, no, I just, no, no, I don't and know. I'm not, <laughs> have you had any injuries from a from because a career like this must be so hard on the body? What's yeah. um Well, first of all, have you had any injuries? And then also, what's kind of like the procedure? Like, let's say for example, you're halfway through doing you know a mission, and yeah. all of a sudden you break your ankle or something. Like, do how do they the, yeah. do they have a, a backup for the backup kind of thing? Like, yeah, I mean, you're pretty expendable to be fair. You break something and then they'll get someone else in straight away. But, Pretty but much. then they have to look exactly like you, know? <laughs> uh, not really. I mean, the uh, thing is, there's quite a lot of people that can kind of just take your place. I mean, men double women. Like, it's pretty easy for someone to quickly just uh, just 
take over. But yeah, I mean, I haven't broken many things. I've broken my thumb and that was just doing motocross. And that was at a weekend training. I've actually never broken anything or really injured anything whilst I've been working on set. And I think touching as well. Touching wood for you. Touching, touching wood. Touching wood. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't have any words, damn it. No. Um, but yeah, I try. it's funny. Like the older you get, the less risks you want to take. Like you don't want to go to gymnastics in the evening. You're like, you know what? It's not even worth it. Um, I- I'm the same. And then, like with my career, I'm yeah. like... The older I get, the I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> I've been so lucky. I've never really properly injured myself. I'm like, if I yeah. injure myself now, I'm kind of fucked because I've got a whole year of work. But so what am I going to do? So yeah, I totally yeah. feel that. And yeah. do you? How do you feel like um, with the whole like? If this is your career, what's mm. the plan for most, not even just you, for most stunt people? Is it, because obviously it's a very well paid job. I assume many of them maybe will invest their money and then when they're done and they just can't be doing with that sort of intense, yeah. like movement on the body, they yeah. live off their investments. Do they, or what, like, how does it work? Um, Don't mind me asking. Well, no, yeah, normally so if you start as like a stunt performer, um, and then you can kind of work your way up. So then maybe you'll go down the fight coordinating route, um, or you'll go down just the coordinating, which is basically like being on set, yeah. uh, making sure everyone's safe, do risk assessment, and okay. then you'll work up to like second unit director, director. Like a lot of some performers actually go on to directing. It just depends where you want to go, really. You know the guy that you said that you worked with, what was his name again? The guy, Wade Eastwood. Yeah. Was he, Wade, a stunt, yeah. was he a stunt guy? Yeah, he was a stunt performer. Uh, ah, yeah. He doesn't do it yeah. anymore. He's he's a director now. N- no, no, yeah. He's like second unit director, coordinator, uh, right. does directing. He does a bit of everything. That's pretty yeah, cool, though, but, isn't it? That he's kind of like... So there is like... Because I, I, I asked that because I was just a bit like... Where do because I always talk I go? To people, yeah, mm. like where do you go? And I ask that because with pole, I feel like we don't really have anywhere to go except for studio ownership, maybe. Mm. Um, but kind of once you've stopped teaching, there's no like director roles to go into. Or, do you know what I mean? Like you're in yeah. quite a good career path in that sense. And I didn't realize that, so that was really interesting to know because I didn't. I kind of thought like once you stop fighting, like yeah, what you do? Like, you yeah, go? what do you do? They retire, retire yeah, for right. the residuals. <laughs> <I'm thinking. laughs> so no, yeah, and. <laughs> oh, sorry. Go on. I was just going to say. So, what's like? What's it like being away for such long periods at a time? Because you are away a lot, right? Yeah, I like it. I actually really like it. Um, it just depends what team you're on. If you're on a good team, normally with Wade's team, I haven't worked with him this year because he's been on Mission Mission Possible Eight, and they didn't really need uh, a stunt double. So, I did my own stuff. Um, Actually, what was the question again? Sorry. I was just saying, like, what's it like being away? Out. What's it like being away? Oh, so being away. Long? Yeah. So if you're in a good core team and you've got good people around you, then yeah, it's, it's actually good. love it. And as well, sick? like, I'm no, I mean, I'm single, and you know, you just kind of just live the life. Really, you just experience the world. You just experience <laughs> all these different places. That um, was, a, that was do... a very nicely worded way of saying I have a lot of fun while I'm away. <laughs> I have fun, so fun. Now, I mean, if I had a boyfriend back at home, I'd, you know, you would have to check in all the time and, yeah. you know, you'd want him to visit, which is cool. But also it's just nice just to just be on the film and just, you know, go to different restaurants, go to check out different places and meet new people. So, yeah, yeah I quite like it. Mm. And is it... um is it quite easy to meet people doing a job like that? Because obviously there must be loads of hot freaking like guys, <laughs> stunt doubles that you're working with, right? There is actually. Yeah, there is, I suppose. Would yeah, you date right. a stunt double? Uh, I mean, I have. You have? I have dated. The problem is, Dan, like, you're in, it's hard to meet other people outside. Like, I go to all these trainings outside and you'd think that I would meet all these guys, but actually... You know, I'm with stuntmen for like 10 hours solid and you kind of just build some kind of like rapport relationship with them. So it's actually quite hard not to end up with a stuntman or mm. whoever you're working with. It's, it's quite hard not to. Try not or, to, but it's quite hard. Or a celebrity, of course. Or, or, <laughs> <laughs> I or, a ask, or an actor. I just want to ask. So, um, obviously... I wanted to ask you about this because I just think it's so <laughs> cool. Um, but we won't go into too much detail, obviously, for obvious reasons. But you did date Henry. How do you say his last name? Saville or 
Cavill. Oh, you say Cavill. Cavill. Okay. So you dated Superman, basically. What was What was that like? And how long did you guys date for? Uh, We dated for, I think, around six months. Maybe a bit less than six months. Uh, It was interesting. It was a cool (laughs) experience, I have to say. Um, It was almost like uh, like Princess Diaries, you know, just, uh, I don't know. It's, It's a funny one. I thought I would enjoy it more than what it was you know like the, you know you got attention you get paparazzi it's, it's pretty mental what people will do to get a picture um oh my god but I, then we, i watch programs about this all the time and i'm just like wow like i was just yeah. watching that um harry and megan program and some of the things these photographers will do to get a photo of them it's crazy, crazy right it so is crazy. did you did you get a lot of hassle when you were dating henry uh at the beginning it was you know, I would get, I didn't, I wasn't there for it, but my neighbour was like, so someone's looking, knocking at the door from, uh, like, the Daily Mail. I was like, what? Um, it was a bit crazy. And then, you know, I'd get, the fans were a bit weird. Like, you know, you'd get messages off fans and, and whatnot and haters out there. Oh, what, um, because so you've taken their crazy. man? <laughs> yeah, pretty much, right? <laughs> that is so, so what, the, the girls would message you and be like, Henry's mine, back off, bitch. Is that what yeah. it was like? <laughs> <laughs> pretty, yeah, pretty much. Uh, yeah, it was crazy, actually. Oh, my God. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I didn't really, you know, I didn't really like that. But you kind of just ignore it. You just kind of just stay out of it and yeah. you just kind of crack on. Uh, you know, you don't know those people. They don't know you. And um, it was it was good. It was good. Like, it was it was nice while it lasted. But, yeah, obviously, uh, we any, ended. But, we, you know, we see famous men since. you've We've, dated? Uh, no, I don't think so i think now no I would you <laughs> would you avoid dating sort of like famous men like henry um cavill and just be like oh, would you because like you said it wasn't the experience you thought it was going to be i guess people probably think like oh my god henry cavill i'm gonna date this celebrity and he's superman it's gonna be amazing and then you're like oh this actually isn't <laughs> quite what i thought it was going to be um would you avoid that in the future because of that sort of like negative side of dating a celebrity or? Uh, I don't know. It's just, the problem is, it's, you know, if you connect with someone, you connect with someone, right? You can't really stop that. It wouldn't let it stop me from dating them. No. Um, but you just got to know when the energy is right. And I'm very much like an energy person. If I vibe with someone and, and I feel like, you know, well, I really like them, then why not? And you never say never, right? Did you guys meet on set? What movie was we that? We did. Uh, Mission Impossible 6. Oh, I was yeah. different. so he was in Mission Impossible 6. I don't remember that. But yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. So you obviously spent quite a lot of time with him there and then you just sort of grew a relationship from that. Yeah, we yeah, exactly. You go to obviously the locations, you're away. Um, so yeah. Oh, sorry, guys. I actually just need to quickly take this. I hope that's okay. It's um, Sarah Scott trying to call me. <laughs> Hello, Sarah. Hey, yeah, I'm just doing a podcast at the moment. Is everything okay? What's up? Oh, you just wanted to tell me about your pole camp in March. Oh, yeah, tell me about it. Who's teaching? Marlo Fiskin, Ali Kamikaze and Kiana Walker. Wow, that sounds amazing. Are you teaching as well? Oh, wow, this sounds so cool. What's the hotel called? Oh, the Mila Graham Resort. Wow, that's going to be amazing. Are there spaces? There are spaces. Oh, my God. I'm going to have to let people know. Well, you definitely have to count me in. I'll go and tell everyone about it now. No worries, babes. I've got you. All right. Bye. Guys, news just in. There's spaces on the Thailand camp. Sarah Scott's off the pole, pole camp. Go and check it out. Go and check out otp retreats and go to her next pole camp in march see you there yeah so let's talk about pole a second do you do pole mm-hmm. anymore like when was the last time you were on a pole Ooh. oh actually i do sometimes go back to pole um so i sometimes I w- before christmas i went every like friday for like the last month i think it's because i like going back to it because I could still chuck like a shoulder mount, like like a little hop. I can still do that. And it's quite nice to just go back to something that yeah. you were okay at. And, you know, with my job, it's quite manly. A lot of the times I'm doing manly things. Like I'm fighting all the time. I literally just rock up like this. 
I, <laughs> you know, I have to carry trucks, I have to carry mats, I have to do ratchet straps, I have to, you know, do quite blokey things. And, you know, you've got a lot of guys, so there's a lot of bands are going around. And I like to sometimes just go back to Sexy Pole, put on my eight-inch high heels and just dance around the pole. So I do tend to go back to it. Funny enough, I actually messaged Sarah and I was like, I want to go back, can we do something next week? So I will go back to it. I love it. But I'm more like the sexy floor stuff now because I just, I forget how like empowering it is. Mm. And I just want to be sexy. And I just want to do that. It's definitely a more popular thing that we're going through at the moment. I think back when you were in pole, we were very much on a tricks focus back then. Whereas I think now mm. people are really discovering like the heels side of things, which is really nice. Yeah. And actually, I mean, I'm loving it. I love dancing. It's just, I do love tricks and tricks will always be kind of my first love, but I enjoy dancing, not just necessarily doing the actual tricks on the floor, but actually putting a choreo together is, um, yeah. like so fun for me. Um, I actually want to yeah. pick up on something that you just said. You know, you were talking about. About, um you're like oh it's you know it's very manly there's lots of men around yeah do you how does that impact on like you know that that you know how they're like bantering or whatever and you having to be around guys all the time do you ever like does that impact on your mental health at all not being around a female energy or no nah, i love it you love it oh that's so <laughs> i funny. like it yeah because i don't know I, i've worked with girls before but i just I, I don't mind it, but I just I just think I'm so used to working with men and being like the only girl on a on a team as well. You're generally fine. There's like one or two girls, and the rest are just men. And I just think I'm just I just like men's energy. I just I get on with them really well. Um, you know, it's like one of the guys. Not really. Yeah, it's one of the guys. You know, they they just they just they just say it how it is and. It's just easy. Have you have you ever stumbled into any problems? I mean, for anyone who can't see the video right now and are just listening on audio, Lucy is a very attractive woman. Um, do you ever have any issues where guys can sometimes need to have a bit of a slap down and be like, back off, babes. <laughs> you, you ain't going to get lucky here. You, no, not really. Like, I think... That you're it's, you're it's, one of the few girls there. Do you know what I mean? So it's sort of like, I, mm. I wonder whether... I'm not saying it's like an all men thing because I know I know some men know their boundaries, but you know when you're like, I was just when you were saying like we're on set, we're there for ten hours a day together, and like you know I just sort of think of like I can imagine some men could maybe be a bit inappropriate because obviously they're in this laddish environment. I just think like have you ever mm. had any problems with that, or have you ever had any issues in that sort of sense? No, not really. I think because they they're quite strict on it. That's you good. know they'll have like these talks or meetings, and they'll make sure that uh everything's uh above board but that's yeah good, yeah exactly well that's that's kind of where i was trying to get out it's more sort of like i wonder what the film industry is like is it still a bit of a boys club where you know the boys sit together or are there rules and regulations in place to protect women from things like that and that's so that you're saying there are yeah there definitely are there that's... definitely are i've never felt like it either like i always felt pretty safe or you know even if there is something that's said a bit out of line i just i think i'm so used to it that You've, you've, you just laugh to get off. on with the guys yeah you kind of yeah you just go with it and you know it's never really out of bounds like it's just you know it's it's, it's good they it's fine it's one of those things mm -hmm. as well like i could imagine you probably give it as much as you take it right you can probably I give do. it a bounds, exactly. Right? exactly i'll probably give it more and that's the problem you know? <laughs> there's more chance of you getting in trouble than them <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> So what's the plans for the future for you? So what's what's going on in Lucy's life? What's like, do you have like a five-year plan of like where you see yourself well, wanting to be and stuff? Like, or do you just sort of like live each day as it comes? Um, it's a hard one because, you know, I don't really want to go into coordinating. I don't really want to have that responsibility. Um, I just, I like performing. Um I don't. I just don't really like that much responsibility. You know, right now, maybe it's because you know I am the age I am, and I'm just. I feel like I've still got loads of stuff that I want to still do. You know, I've not been set on fire really yet, so I want to be set on fire. You know, I want to do other. Wait, other hold stunts. on. I just want to check. When yeah. you say set on fire, do you mean like yeah. physically set on fire or like... yeah, like set me on fire, like full body burn, everything, <laughs> set me on fire. <laughs> I was, yeah, like, so many things. I was like, does she mean like metaphorically? I was like, but she is a stunt woman. No, I was like, so you should probably check that. <laughs> You're like, no, I actually want someone to set me on fire. Wow, I amazing. <laughs> yeah, there's so, like, so many things I want to do. And I don't really know yet. I just, oh, I wouldn't mind living in Bali. That's, the problem is, 
when you're working you've got to work right so you, you know you don't get paid unless you're working so it's like i need to find a job actually that lets well, me get paid when i'm online or something i'd actually like to ask you a question about that and again this is really random and uh, i'm talking to you more from a business point of view here but mm. so you are your business because you're a self-employed person right yeah yeah so and do you have a company or are you a self like are you self-employed like, do you have a like do you know what I mean? Like, are you a limited company? Yeah. No, yeah, I've got a limited company. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, and is it registered in the UK? Yeah. Can I just ask then? Obviously, your um, your jobs they pay for you to be on these locations, right? So you're living there yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Why are you registered in the UK and not somewhere like Dubai? Um, I feel like you have to live in Dubai, don't you, for like six months? Yeah, but you could do. Like, do you, so I've always wondered this, and I know there's many people that are probably like, "Oh my god, Dan, that's like illegal." It's totally not illegal, by the way. <laughs> but so many of your favorite, so many people, right? You'll mm -hmm. you'll notice many of your favorite fitness influencers. They're they're the ones who do it the most. You'll notice that all of a sudden they're in Dubai, and you'll be like, "Oh, they're on holiday in Dubai." Then you'll be like, "Oh, they're mm -hmm. moving to Dubai," and then they're living there, and it's like, "Oh," and then you realize obviously it's because the tax the tax there is like yeah. zero so they don't pay tax i think they pay vat or something like that i don't know but yeah it's funny, actually there was a lot of instagrammers there well i went to dubai earlier uh, in december and oh, they yeah. were there and i was like it's yeah all influencers. Mm. and it's because obviously the the tax is better there and with online work you have no reason to it's really funny because someone actually said this to me i teach online so a big mm. probably i'd say actually 80 percent okay maybe not 60 percent of my income comes from online right wow. um and people have said to me like have you ever thought about living in bali and just buying a nice house in bali and putting like a nice That's studio the area in there and you know what i think the reality of it is that I just don't think I could do it. This is my home. Like the UK is where I live. I have all my family here. I know the UK. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like I speak the language here. Yeah, but also, Dan, you got to think about the weather. You know, you get a little <laughs> moped in Bali. You're just cruising on your little moped. You go training. So come then. You know, why aren't you doing oh, it then? Why aren't you living there? Because I need to work. And the problem is with me, is like the work is like, it takes, you know, this movie is six months. I could be on a movie for like a year. Um, so I'd rather, what I'd normally do is work a job and then I'll take one month off or I'll take three months off and I'll go to that place, stay Bali for like a month or two. Just get Airbnb. Exactly. It's, it's easier. The problem is there's so much work going in the UK um, that it's, it's, it's hard to, to move somewhere. Maybe later, maybe in five years I'll, I'll be in Bali. Right. There's, there's a dream there. Yeah. But right now it's just it's just crazy busy here. So I may as well hold on to it and just, you know, work as much as possible. It's something, I mean, obviously, like, Sarah Scott moved to Thailand, and I totally get it, like, what a cool life, like, to live. And obviously, I suppose yeah. the tax is definitely a bonus. But, like, uh, but Thailand, it's not no tax. They still have to pay tax and stuff. And it is a ball late to move your business to a country like that. But, you know, what a cool life. Like, she's living in it's Thailand cool now. She's, like, yeah. she's got a studio there. She goes and she does her BJJ, and she's got a beach. Like, just to, mm -hmm. it's like, what a life but i just feel like i'd get a bit homesick and i'd miss my family but it's definitely something me and mitch talk about all the time we're just like realistically if we wanted to we could <laughs> it's yeah, just taking just, the plunge it's so hard i just think sometimes as well like you go away to these places on a holiday vacation it's nice at the time right. but actually realistically would you get a bit bored of it like, they're of not course. your real friends well they're obviously you make real friends but you know a lot of people go there on holiday, so they're staying a week or two and then they leave again. Yeah. So really, what relationships are you building there? I of do course. really crave. Like, even when I came back from Thailand, I was like, thank God, because I want my friends back now. Yeah. I'm ready to just, you know, see my real friends. And and as well, like you said, you know, it's like when I, because I remember going to the US once, I remember going to Australia as well. And when I went to Australia, mm. I said to Mitch, she's like, Mitch, genuinely, I could imagine us living here i could imagine oh us, really I, was like, I can imagine us living in sydney i was like so cool here i was like i've got loads of friends here and stuff but the problem was that i was there for a short period of time so of course they were making mm. time for me but if i moved there it would just be like you know normal life wouldn't it It'd just be like well i wouldn't see them all the time because i'd be working i wouldn't be on a holiday exactly exactly that's the thing it's like you've got to work when you're there it's even seeing people online in bali you know actually realistically they've actually got to spend like all day on their laptops yeah they, they're by the swimming pool but i can go off and i can go do my things i go to the beach but you have to work online 
I, actually, isn't that good? I definitely think retirement wise, it would be amazing. Like great idea for retirement like possibly because what people retire on here, if they took that to Bali or Thailand. Oh yeah. Oh my God, yeah, they'd like live the queen. best life. Yeah. Of course they would. They'd have the best time. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's definitely, so, it's, it's funny, that obviously, you mentioning that because it's definitely something that I think about it all the time. I just think, God, wouldn't it be amazing just to like yeah. leave But you UK. never know, right? You never know who I might meet. Maybe I'll meet someone along, on along my, my road, my path. Of and course. And they might take me somewhere. Well, and, I never thought about living. And do you think, um, like, in the future, is that something that you'd like to do, like, to kind of settle down with someone and maybe, like, start a family or anything like that? Is that something you'd love to do? Um, I mean, I would love to meet someone, but uh, as far as, say, like, kids, probably, I don't know, probably not. I'm not really, you know. I just, right now, not really. I'm just not a kid person. Yeah. I'm, I like to do my own thing. You know, I had a dog, actually, and that was that was a big responsibility, you know, so... I just think from that, I just know that I just, I like to do my own things. Mm. You, know, I, you know, I don't like to be strict. Like, I don't want to be. There's no, I, I, honestly, I, I'm totally with you. People ask me all the time, and I've talked about this on this podcast before, about, you know, people say to me, are you and Mitch going to adopt? And we're like, no, like, we don't, <laughs> we don't like children. Like, we just, we, yeah, we've yeah. got a niece, mm-hmm. love her, love our niece. We you can love, give her back, though. Exactly. Love being able to just give her back and be like, bye, hun, see ya. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, love exactly. that. I love having yeah. that. I also, ugh, it's so negative, but I, I'm very much like, we've got more than enough humans in this world. We do not need to be, like, you know, getting no. a surrogate and getting any, any more children. So if we ever did, we, of course, would adopt. But, yeah, I just... I don't know. We're, we're too selfish. We've got three dogs, though. They are our children. Really? So did you say you did have a dog? You don't have a dog anymore? I did. I did not. No, I had, obviously, I had gotten for my first year uh, for my ex-boyfriend, and then we broke up. So then I was just, like, on my own. Um, he got custody of the kids. He got custody. Yeah, and then I, I, was, I was basically on my own here, and I was like, you know what? It was so hard. I was getting jobs. And they were all going to be away for a couple of months. And then sooner or later, I was, I was literally just ringing out friends. Can you look after him? Uh, or like taking doggy daycare. And it just wasn't fair. And I just, for myself, I just wasn't enjoying it. And I just thought, I don't want to spend the next 10 years not enjoying it. Because I, I should create an amazing life for this dog. And yet, I'm not having any fun with it. Yeah. And I thought I would, that was the missing piece. And I thought, oh, I just want a love from a dog. I love dogs. I love them. Like mm-hmm. I've been brought up with them. Um, and then I rang up my mum and I was, I was crying. I was like, Mom, I just I don't think I can do it anymore. She's like, it's okay. We'll find another home for him. Aww. And he was eight months. He was eight months at the time. And then literally she just spoke to her gardener outside and he met the dog as well. And he, he said, oh, well, I was thinking about getting a dog actually for my, my kids. Um, yeah, I'll take, I'll take him. <laughs> and literally oh that day, God. she was like, we found a new owner. And then, oh, I thought yeah, you were going to say that he went back with your ex or something. I was no, like, oh, no, okay. no, no, oh, no. No, okay. he actually went to a whole new owner. And he's super happy. I actually saw him the other day. And he's like huge. Like he's like triple the size. He's a golden retriever. Oh. So yeah, it was good to see him. I just think I needed kind of uh, closure. And I totally got that. He was super happy. Didn't even recognize me anyways. <laughs> So. <laughs> that's good yeah no I remember yeah. actually funny talking about that years and years and years ago when I first ever like sort of moved out and stuff I thought I needed a dog as well I was like I feel like I need mm. a companion and I ended up having to rehome him it was one of the biggest really? the hardest things I'd ever done so bad I was like am I the only person that does this I feel such a letdown but no not at all no. it happened it's, it's a mistake in my life that I learned so much from and it just now of course I've got my three dogs and I would never ever even consider it but at the yeah. time, I was young and stupid, and I just think it was a really horrible lesson to learn. But you know what? Yeah. Because he was like such like um, he was a little Pomeranian. And he was gorgeous, and oh, honestly, cute. like rehoming him was like the easiest thing ever. Literally, <laughs> our, again, our neighbours were like, "Oh, we know someone who would love to have him." I was like, oh, "Really? Okay. It's amazing, isn't it? How many people actually <laughs> want the dog?" You're like, uh, "Okay." But <laughs> little side note: time. anyone listening to this podcast, <laughs> dogs are for life, not just for Christmas. Okay. <laughs> exactly but this, this is what i mean folk. as well like talking about you know you're talking about like starting family and things with the sort of job that you do i bet it's hard enough for you to settle down with a boyfriend let alone settle down with dogs kids and stuff like this right it's just not on the agenda yeah. at the moment right no and i think as well like i'm i am i'm, I'm so selfish like at the weekend i just i'm literally every time i wake up i'm like what okay what training am i going to do what what am i going to do today that just 
I don't know. It's just, it doesn't involve, I mean, it involves people, but it involves people that I want to spend time with and the things that I want to do. And yeah, I mean, you know, when, when I do, you know, I'm, I'm with someone or a boyfriend, obviously they're involved in this, but you know, I just, I just love to do so many things that right now I'm just enjoying being by myself and not having to, you know, check in with someone or, you know, just, I, I just love to do my things. Yeah, I don't blame you. It's like that. You're you're a very independent person anyway, like you said, like, because that's what I was saying to you about, like, how do you cope with being away and stuff? And you're like, oh, I love it. And it's just like okay. some people would be like, oh, I really miss my family and stuff. And you're like, oh, I love it. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> so you're an I independent do. woman. Don't get me wrong. I like to come back home. But as soon as you're back home, you think, oh, I'm back home now. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> so I would just go be away again. And when, when, sorry, go kind of back to the Sunday actually, because I just thought of a question. You know, um, when you're on these stunt gigs and stuff, do they put you in nice, like, accommodation or are you in, like, shitty hotels and stuff? No, they put you in actually pretty nice accommodation. Actually, funny though, in Norway, we were in Norway and that was when COVID was going on and we were staying in this amazing boat. So, <laughs> first night it was amazing. And then the second night, it was literally, they took us to this boat, and this boat was the one that they kept people in when someone had COVID in the whole boat. They got locked in because it, it was like a COVID boat, and it was absolutely vile. Like, I'm talking, you could actually feel the person next to you in the room, like their bed. If they moved, your bed would move with it, and you could just hear them. Like, it was so, uh, it was disgusting. That was, like, the worst thing ever on oh that my, boat. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> but apart from that, all the other locations, like all the other hotels, they're pretty nice. They put you up in like, you know, four star, five star ones. It's it's pretty cool. You know, the one we did, uh, where was it? It was in Abu Dhabi. And that was on Mission Impossible, actually, number seven. And we were in the desert, but it was the most stunning hotel. There was, you know, we had like a little villa, like a little pool. Uh, yeah, it was insane. It That's was amazing. Crazy. There was like volleyball outside, swimming pools. The gym was amazing. <laughs> June. So sometimes you get pretty lucky and you get to go to. And they're paying, places. it's all expenses paid. They're paying your flights, your food, your travel, your hotel, everything. Yeah, everything. What a life. Everything. What a life you lead now. Just living the dream. Who, living the dream. Who knew that Lucy Cork, <laughs> that I knew all those years ago, would be doing this now? Oh, I, just, I would never think that, I just right? I think it's crazy. I'm so proud of you, though. That's just so cool. Like, well done for going to such a completely different direction. I think that's just thank such you, a really you. cool thing that you've done. But, yeah, um, thank God. What would I don't know you, I would have done, to be honest. What would you say to someone who's listened to this and thought, oh, my God, like, what a cool life. Like, I want to – I'd love to do something like that. Like, um, how how would you recommend someone who wants to get into this line of work? Like, what would you tell them to do? Uh, I would just say – well, it's a hard one because I don't, when I got on, obviously, I got on the British Register, so British Stunt Register. Um but I don't know, like, you know, I'd probably just say try try that avenue first because obviously those skills are, are good anyway. So, you know, maybe you, you could contact equity um, and then obviously you've got all your disciplines on there and I would just say crack through the discipline. You know, if you're interested in martial arts, I mean, martial arts is your base, basically. Like fighting is your core thing. Like that's majority of films, they've got to fight in. So it's probably you know, the best thing to kind of start with. Yeah. Um, and obviously, look, pole dance is a great gymnast, to be honest. Like, right. Uh, even though I didn't do it, like, they've got so many skill sets, you know, they can already do splits. They're already very flexible. They're already very good at flowing and dancing. So, you know, your gymnastics, start with that. And then, uh, and then, yeah, just kind of work through those skills because they're just so fun as well to learn. So, yeah, I would just say do that and then, and then next minute, you know, you'll be working on Mission Impossible. Yeah, it's exactly. <laughs> exactly. Are, there, are there a lot more girls doing it now, like, compared to what it was mm. when you first started? Yeah, definitely. There's a lot more girls. I think there's, a, uh, I don't know, about 150 girls or something, I think I heard the other day. Just in the UK? Uh, just in the UK, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, exactly. There's a lot more girls, like, LA-based. I thought you Australia, meant, like, whatever. in the world. I was like, whoa, Oh, no, no, there's a lot more. <gasps> Wow, yeah, no, okay. there's a lot more, lot more girls than that. Oh. Think, well, of course, yeah. there's going to be loads more girls doing it now because they all think that if they become a stuntwoman, they can date Henry Cavill. 
true. You're right. Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> it's been lovely catching up with you, and amazing work that you've done. By the way, I'm so proud of everything that you've done, and I know you're going to keep going on mm-hmm. doing great things. Who knows? Maybe we'll see you up for an Oscar one day. Maybe they will have got you acting as well. <laughs> but yeah. Well done. Yeah, I just babe. have to get good at doing lines, and then uh, and then we'll see about that. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, it's something to consider. Who knows? Don't rule it out. You never know. You might end up in. No, you're right. One of your next then, skills. All these other skills. Maybe exactly. my acting could be the next one, right? Maybe acting is the next <laughs> skill. That's not even a joke. Like, what a cool, like, career progression. Like, how cool would that be? Well, I mean, I, it would not surprise me, babe. I did. I wasn't expecting you yeah, to we'll be here. We'll do a podcast, like, in a, <laughs> five years from now, and I'll be like, I know. Star. You'll be like <laughs> Superwoman. You'll be like playing the next Superwoman. I'll be like, Lucy, please come on my podcast, please. <laughs> I'm like, no, sorry. Who are you? You'll Dan be Lee? like, Dan Rosen, who? <laughs> I'll be like, bitch, I've got videos of you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no well done babe <laughs> i'm really proud of everything you're doing and i uh, thank you so much for oh, coming on and doing this with of me course. it was no, lovely no talking to you and i'll and hopefully you. see you soon yes you will thank you for having me bye <laughs> bye Thank you so much for watching this episode. Really hope you enjoyed it. I was so fascinated by this whole stunt woman thing. What a cool career. Maybe my next career is going to be as a stunt man. Who knows? Anyway, remember, you can always request guests on this show. So if you've got someone you want to hear from, send me a DM on Instagram. I would love to hear from you. Until next time. Bye. That was all the tea that you can get this week. Join me next time right here, it's the Weekly Deep.